Welcome back to Investigate Joe Rogan, the podcast where I investigate things said on the Joe Rogan experience. This will be part three, the finale of the episode 9-11 trilogy, uh, looking at perhaps the greatest episode of JRE. And I'll start by talking about HARP, aka High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program, which Alex Jones says can manipulate the weather. He says that there are weather wars between various countries. They can create hurricanes and things. And he says that there were multiple HARP whistleblowers who were going to come on InfoWars, but were scared off by the CIA at the last second. And there's no evidence for the idea that HARP can control the weather. Um, if you want to look for evidence, they give public tours of the facility sometime. So you, you could stop by if you happen to live in Alaska. And what HARP does is it shoots electromagnetic waves into the ionosphere. And disturbing the ionosphere is not something that can create hurricanes or earthquakes. If it was, we would be totally screwed, because the sun occasionally creates huge turbulence in the ionosphere with geomagnetic storms, way more powerful than anything HARP is capable of creating. So if you could manipulate the weather like this, every time there was a big sunstorm, there would be like a hundred hurricanes at once and we would all be dead. So luckily, the, the science does not support this general idea. But there are two things that people will point to as evidence of Harp being this like secret uh, mad villain weather station. So they will point to this paper called Weather as a Force Multiplier, Owning the Weather in 2025, that was presented to the Air Force, and you can just read online. And it says that weather manipulation should be researched, it advocates for that, and it also says that it will eventually happen. But I mean, the, the military has, has researched all sorts of wacky stuff, you know, like mind control in the 60s. It doesn't mean they can actually do it. And as for the idea that it will happen eventually, I mean, that's not too crazy. I mean, uh, I doubt people in like medieval times could have predicted nukes. So it's, it's pretty tough to predict what will eventually become possible. And then the other thing is that in 1998, the issue of HARP's potential negative impact on the environment and capabilities was brought up in European Parliament. Uh, now, first of all, Europe. If we Americans want to build a powerful machine that can create hurricanes and earthquakes, we will do so. We do not need your permission. Um, <laughs> we will do whatever we want with the weather, okay? But this this didn't really go anywhere. There was not like a European investigation of HARP or anything. They're just sort of asking like, well, what if it's bad? But it, but it wasn't bad. You know, people thought that the Hadron Collider would, would like open up a portal to another dimension or whatever, but then nothing happened. That's sort of like what this was like, but with HARP. Another sort of classic conspiracy that they get into is they, they touch on vaccines a little bit. And Alex Jones says that Trump is investigating vaccines. And it does seem as though Trump was a skeptic about vaccines at one time. But there was, there was never a government investigation into vaccines. And currently, Trump seems to be on board with vaccines. He said, and I'm not going to try and do a Trump uh, impression. I can't do it. I'm sorry. But he said, quote, they have to get the shots. The vaccinations are so important. This is really going around now. They have to get their shots, end quote. So Trump ha has since come around on vaccines. Um, but if you go on Infowars and read about this, they, they try and play it off as some, some sort of elaborate ruse that, that Trump is playing. You know, publicly he's saying to 
to get vaccinated. And then in private, he's launching a secret investigation. But uh, again, there, there's just no evidence. Another, another fairly mainstream idea that gets brought up is uh, Alex Jones says that climate change is not man-made, but is just due to the sun and sort of natural changes in the sun. And he says all the astrophysicists are sure of this. And this is not true, but it, it is a, um, a fairly common idea that you'll see among people who don't think climate change is man-made. But you can, you can pretty easily see that it, it is not true if you, uh, if you look into it more. Um, it seems convincing at first, but there has not been an increase in the amount of energy from the sun hitting the atmosphere since 1978 when they started measuring. So that just, ha that just hasn't happened, even though the temperature has increased. The other major evidence against this is that um, the stratosphere is actually cooling while the surface of the Earth is warming up. And if this was all a result of increased sun energy, you would think if it would be the opposite. You know, we'd, we'd be heating up top down. The stratosphere certainly wouldn't be cooling down. So, no, all astrophysicists do not support this idea. It's, it's not really taken seriously by the scientific community at large. Another, another fairly mainstream conspiracy brought up is uh, Alex Jones saying that John Brennan, former CIA director, um, was a Muslim, or I guess is a Muslim. And this was started by a former FBI agent, John Guandolo, and he started this idea. But he didn't provide any sort of evidence for his claim. He just said, yeah, John Brennan is secretly a Muslim. And his, this guy's post-FBI career has been like traveling the country, training cops in like anti-terrorism detection and tactics and things. And he's sort of known for perpetuating this conspiracy that there is like a secret Muslim operation to like infiltrate the government. But I could just say right now, you know, oh, Mike Pompeo is a secret Muslim. And I have provided just as much evidence as this dude did of John Brennan being a Muslim. Then probably the craziest thing that they get into in the whole episode is... You probably remember Alex Jones rattling off in a Rain Man-esque fashion, U.S. Code Title 50, Chapter 32, Subsection 128, Paragraph B, which he says means that the government can experiment on people as long as it's for research purposes. And this is true. However, it's even crazier than Alex Jones says it is if you read more of it. Basically, at first it says, um, any test or experiment involving the use of a chemical agent or a biological agent on a civilian population or any other testing of a chemical agent or a biological agent on human subjects is prohibited. But then paragraph B, which is what Alex Jones brings up, says exceptions. It says that this does not apply to a test or experiment carried out for any of the following purposes. Any peaceful purpose that is related to a medical, therapeutic, pharmaceutical, agricultural, industrial, or research activity. So it is allowed. However, he leaves out paragraph C, um, which says, The Secretary of Defense may conduct a test or experiment described in subsection B only if informed consent to the testing was obtained from each human subject in advance of the testing on that subject. So at first, that actually makes it seem less crazy. You know, as long as everyone consents, I guess it's not so bad. You know, if you sign up and you know you're about to be involved in like the CIA attempting to control your mind via like LSD overdoses, you know, as long as everyone involved is aware and consenting, I don't really see a problem. But, if you go to the same, uh, the same section 50, but then go to U.S. Code 1515, suspension, presidential authorization, 
It says, The operation of this chapter, or any portion thereof, may be suspended by the President during the period of any war declared by Congress and during the period of any national emergency declared by Congress or by the President. So they can throw the part about informed consent being required out the window if they want to, pretty much whenever, because it's really not hard to declare a national emergency. There were 31 in 2019. Were there like 31 times in 2019 where like the country was in existential danger or something? No, you can, you can pretty much just declare one whenever you want. So basically, yes, the government can uh, experiment on humans if they want to, given the right circumstances. Does this mean that chemtrails are real? which is why most people talk about this sort of thing, uh, no. But it is, it's not great that this law exists. I'll just say that. Then they get back onto space, and Rogan says something that he, he says in a bunch of other episodes too, which is that NASA uses an edited picture of Michael Collins, and they pretend that it's from a real spacewalk. And this is not true. The picture of Michael Collins that looks like he's on the spacewalk is from his book Carrying the Fire and it's on it's on the inside cover and there, there's not like a caption or something that says here's Michael Collins walking in space it's just it's more like an artistic uh, depiction that they did the actual original photo is also in that same book and that's the one where you can see it's from training and there's a caption that says, the zero-G airplane, sickening. And also in the book, um, Michael Collins writes, quote, one of the greatest disappointments of the flight was the fact that there were no photos of my spacewalk. So they don't present the picture as being from the spacewalk. He straight up says there are no pictures of the spacewalk. And NASA does not use this image in promotional material or whatever. The last space thing mentioned in the episode is Alex Jones says there are 12 dimensions and dark matter is gravity bleeding into our universe. Now scientists who are into string theory say that there are 11 dimensions. So Al Alex Jones is pretty close there. He's only off by one dimension. Uh, but dark matter is basically, and this is like a big basically, but basically, the theory is um, scientists have observed that there would have to be more matter than they think there is to account for how much gravity that there is. Dark matter itself is not gravity. So a Alex Jones is, is wrong about that one. And from here, uh, he, he takes off into a lot of big more unverifiable things, the big enchilada, as he says, um, which I won't really get into. I'm, I'm going to stick to uh, smaller things that you can actually fact check, <laughs> even though the big enchilada is, uh, well, it's a very interesting idea. But a few smaller things here. Alex Jones says that a Dallas hospital was caught harvesting organs and that 60 Minutes did a story about it. This is not true. I couldn't, I couldn't find anything for that. Alex Jones says that screen time lowers your IQ and your fertility. And this is like kind of true a little bit. There's no, there's no studies that say watching TV, uh, using computers, etc lowers your IQ, but if you only look at screens and as a result do not ever exercise or interact with people in person uh, or read, you will probably miss out on potential IQ development, especially if you are a child. So in a way you, you could say it could make you dumb. But it's, it's not like looking at an LED screen 
like blasts your your brain right through your eyeballs. It's more like there's better things a kid could be doing in their development. And there there's no evidence that it affects fertility either. Um, except for if you have a laptop and you actually use it on the top of your lap, that could lower your fertility, according to some studies. Because, you know, you're you're cooking things down there. So you probably should avoid that in general. They talk about Darwin later, and Alex Jones says that Darwin claimed he got his theories from demons or, like, hallucinations. It's not totally clear what he's implying. But, like, Rogan, Rogan goes along with him. He's like, yeah, I heard that. That's probably true. It's not true. What they are probably both thinking of is Alfred Russell Wallace's interest in spiritualism and seances. And Alfred Russell Wallace was a guy who came up with evolution independently of Darwin, pretty much at the same time. And he really was into some wacky stuff. He was into channeling, and he was also into ghost pictures, which was a trend at the time, where you would um, have a photograph taken of you, and then they'd, they'd work their magic, I guess, and then they'd give it back to you. And uh, like one of your deceased relatives would be in the picture. And he was like totally on board with this. He was like, this is real. There's no way this could be faked. It's not Photoshop, guys. It's real. But Darwin actually did not approve of any of this stuff. And he said that like it hurt this guy's reputation and that he was being dumb, basically. And Alfred Russell Wallace also didn't say that he got his theories from seances or anything. It was just another thing he was into. And then getting into more political things, Alex Jones says that Trump banned lobbyists for life, which is an exaggeration of what actually happened. It's not totally untrue, I guess. Uh, What Trump did was he created a five-year ban on administration officials lobbying their former agency. It doesn't ban them from becoming a lobbyist in general, and it doesn't extend to Congress either. So congressmen can still become lobbyists, like, right after. So I guess this is a step in the right direction, but it's, it's certainly not a ban on lobbyists for life. Other 2016 political things they they touch on, he says that Hillary started the birther movement, and this is kind of true. Uh, There's no evidence that Hillary herself or her campaign uh, helped start the birther movement, but it does seem as though Hillary supporters were actually the, the origin point of the whole thing. There were these uh, emails that were going around Hillary supporter land about Obama's birth certificate. And there are some, there are things that predate these emails. There were like random blogs and forums and stuff uh, talking about Obama's birth certificate. So I think it's kind of one of those things where a bunch of people came up with it at the same time, sort of like evolution. Um, (laughs) Although less historically significant than evolution probably. He, Alex Jones also says that Hillary was in the hospital for a year, but it was actually more like three weeks. But I mean, does, any, does anyone really care about that in 2020? You know, wh- whatever. Alex Jones says that Obama's Harvard Law Review bio said he was from Kenya, um, which is sort of true. It was actually a promotional booklet um, that was produced in 91 by the literary agency he was signed with at the time, and it really did say that he was from Kenya. But the agency has since said that this was a mistake and that it's not true. So you could obviously you could just say, well, they're lying, they're in on the conspiracy. But Breitbart, who were the ones who dug up this picture and spread it around, they have actually since um, come out and said that they don't think it's true either. They've said that they they don't think Obama was born in Kenya. Um, they think that it was just a real mistake and that it's just evidence that Obama sort of manipulates his identity uh, whenever it suits him. 
So if you think this is like real evidence, you have become even more of an Obama conspiracy theorist than Breitbart. And I feel like at that point, you need to evaluate your life. You know, kind of like how Alex Jones makes fun of Eddie Bravo in this episode, and even more so in the other episode that he's on. You know, if Alex Jones is making fun of you for being too much of a conspiracy theorist, you need, you need to evaluate your points of view. I'm, I'm looking at you, flat, flat Earth crowd. Alex Jones is making fun of you. It's, <laughs> it's time to rethink some things. There is also no evidence for Frank Marshall Davis being Obama's real dad, or his mom being in the CIA, or his grandpa being in the CIA, which are all things Alex Jones brings up on this podcast. The closest thing resembling an Obama-CIA connection is he worked at Business International Corporation from 1983 to 1984. And in the 50s, this company provided cover for CIA agents. That is confirmed, and that's the closest you'll get to some sort of Obama CIA something. I don't, I don't even know what it would be exactly. He and Rogan also say that Obama wanted to close Guantanamo and legalize weed, which is partially true. Obama did really want to close Guacamole Bay, but he never said he wanted to legalize weed. He said it should be, quote, treated as a public health issue, unquote. And it's it seems like he probably would have been for decriminalizing weed, but I couldn't find him saying it should be legalized anywhere. Uh, Alex Jones also says that the Countering Disinformation and Propaganda Act was Obama's Ministry of Truth, or would have been his Ministry of Truth, you know, like 1984. Um, he says it was going to, like, federalize the whole media. But, I mean, this act really, this act passed. It happened. And we're not living in, in 1984 land. Uh, it was a bipartisan act. It was actually just about allocating funds to counter uh, Russian influence on elections. You know, with, like, the like bots and stuff. So that's a pretty big mischaracterization. And then, like, out of nowhere, Alex Jones says that Oprah is in a secret eugenics group. And I have no idea where this is coming from. I couldn't find anything about that. <laughs> and then he, he talks about the Club of Rome, and he says it's a depopulation group. And the Club of Rome is a group of politicians and academics and stuff that probably would like to see the the population go down because they've written a bunch of stuff about how overpopulation should be a concern and it will be a strain on the environment and there is an interesting quote from a 1972 paper of theirs called the limits of growth um, which actually got some traction i'm going to read it just because i found it to be quite interesting Every state has been so used to classifying its neighbors as friend or foe that the sudden absence of traditional adversaries has left governments and public opinion with a great void to fill. New enemies have to be identified, new strategies imagined, and new weapons devised. In searching for a common enemy against whom we can unite, we came up with the idea that pollution, the threat of global warming, water shortages, famine, and the like would fit the bill. In their totality and their interactions, these phenomena do constitute a common threat which must be confronted by everyone together. But in designating these dangers as the enemy, we fall into the trap which we have already warned readers about, namely mistaking symptoms for causes. All these dangers are caused by human intervention in natural processes, and it is only through changed attitudes and behavior that they can be overcome. The real enemy, then, is humanity itself. So that quote ends on a pretty spooky note, obviously. But the Club of Rome doesn't actually do anything. They just write papers like this. They don't have any real influence or power to enact any change. I think their mistake was that they gave themselves such a spooky name, the Club of Rome. If they had just had the foresight to name themselves something 
boring sounding like the council for research on overpopulation and its effect on the environment they probably would not have all these conspiracies about them another one of the more interesting things that alex jones brings up is he says that joe kennedy jfk's brother died flying drones in world war ii and this is just true it's it's not a conspiracy or anything you, you can just look this up Basically, what they would do in World War II is they would fill up planes with explosives and then they would fly them into targets with remote control systems. But because the technology wasn't fully there yet, they still needed pilots to take off and do some like basic maneuvers in the air. And Joseph Kennedy Jr. was one of those pilots and he took off, but then the bombs blew up too soon because of like a malfunction and then he died. And he was originally going to be the one who they pushed to have a political career and become president eventually. So JFK sort of became like his substitute when he died in the war. There was a couple other things like this that Alex Jones says in such a conspiratorial tone of voice that they don't seem real, but they're actually just like historical facts. Like earlier, he says like, wow, they had nuclear subs in the 50s. And that's also just true. Like It's not a conspiracy or anything. And he says that there were, or there are nuclear reactors in Austin. And he says it like it's a, a big like truth bomb. But it's just sort of, it's just true. The University of Texas at Austin ha has reactors for like, uh, their like nuclear engineering program. And the last thing I'll mention is Alex Jones's confident assertion that uh, Trump will cut taxes for everybody except the rich, who he will increase taxes on. And this was in 2017. So now we can look back and say, Alex Jones was, was partially right here. Uh, Trump certainly did cut taxes, uh, but he cut taxes for like rich people and corporations too. So you could say his prediction was kind of true. I think it's also interesting that in this episode, Alex Jones describes globalists, which is sort of, if you know anything about Alex Jones, his catch-all term for enemies, and he describes them as corporate neo-colonialists. And I think if you talked to like your local undergrad communist, they would agree with this. I think this is sort of, maybe not common, but it's certainly a sentiment that a lot of uh, leftists have and I, I don't think they would <laughs> I, I do not think that they are aware that Alex Jones shares this opinion and he also in this episode says that taxes are for the rich which I think is quite a common sentiment I think the average Democrat would support that idea you know there's a whole a whole side of Alex Jones here that you do not see on Infowars but you do see in in this podcast and the other one he did uh, on JRE. They show a, a side of Alex Jones that is not completely crazy. He certainly says some things that are true, as I've pointed out, but he says many things, many more things that are not true. And I think people who follow Alex Jones and InfoWars have this sort of intense but very narrow skepticism. Their skepticism is like a laser. They are incredibly skeptical of everything the government says or does, but they will accept things that Alex Jones says at face value, even if you know he has no evidence and there's no reason to think that it's true. So I don't think there's really a problem with following Alex Jones as long as you are as skeptical of him as you are of the government and all these other groups. If, if you have any, any thoughts about this 9-11 trilogy, if you think I missed anything, uh, you can just email me. You can email me any evidence I may have missed, or you can message me on Twitter. I was going to do the other Alex Jones and Eddie Bravo episode right after this, because I do think they are probably the most entertaining episodes ever. 
but I think I need to give my brain a break uh, before I become too noited here. So I think the, the next episode is, is going to be business as usual, some recent episode. But maybe I'll do the other Alex Jones, Eddie Bravo episode sometime in the future. Thank you.